on. I'm still in love with the recording. You know, we look like spectres today, right? So you like you can't be like, oh, I love it. No, uh, you look no, like a spectre. That I'm doesn't help. Like, I'm in Stop moving. It doesn't. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. I feel like a. I feel like a. Well, you know, actually, I don't want people to see me that well because I've been running about all morning. And so I don't look gorgeous. So I think that works. You don't look, go- I can't. I'm Jade though. And I will not, oh, good job. Thank you for remembering to high introduce five. Like, social distance this is, style. Uh, COVID is still here. As, like we said high five, social distance style. And then my hand come down, it just hits yours. <laughs> That's I'm like, terrible. I'm like, hand sanitizer? I can't. Well, no, you're not supposed to like admit it. Okay, we're supposed oh, to like no. pretend like it never happened and move on. Okay. Anyway, we have an important guest today, so we're supposed to be professionals. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Let me button it up. <clears throat> I didn't know. You didn't tell me to be professional. Yes. Again, I am Jade, and we have up the and I thought no, lady. No, no, this is seriously no. <laughs> 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 That's not what you brought. But we wrote both. <laughs> yeah, we did. We both literally life guys with pop poetry. Jade and up the and I thought. I can't get it. I can't do it. Maybe I'd be like, we wrote and I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy <laughs> if only I were me. <laughs> uh what Widow's West? Widow, Widow's, the widow's debt series and uh pulling coffee i was just being silly and i was trying to be professional and you just jumped in and took my thing so i'm, I'm just, so sorry but you can it. find out everything your ladies are doing i'm joking i can't and you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com and we have a co-host today yes this is how you know it's really impressive it's a, a really important impressive time i know we had to bring in the serious one Hi, I am Tanya Todd. I'm an author, actress, and the host of the 52 Love podcast. Fabulous. Okay. I know, right? It's so concise. One day when I do like that and I'm like five two, that is when I will be professional like Tanya. Exactly. But um, But y'all aren't here to hear about me wishing I was a little bit taller. You're here to hear from my wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? I would love to introduce myself. I'm Marta Kaufman. And um, some things you don't know about me. I am an animal freak. I've been arrested. And um, being a grandmother is the role I was born to play. I have to ask, why were you arrested? Um, I was gonna civil disobedience. Oh, Oh, good for you. The cool arresting, right? Just yeah. the cool arresting. That's the one. That's, that's the one. That's the one you want. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'm back to back. Being, Are we back to being? We're good. We we're got back it. Back to being serious. We're buttoned up. Just be yourselves. That's why your audience is here. That is quite true. <laughs> I know. I just one day, I'm, we're gonna fill this promise. We're gonna be like, we're serious and be serious. Just for one episode to freak everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> My question to you is. Um, you had started off writing and then you pitched one of the biggest shows. How did you deal with that kind of success? And were you intimidated at all? You know, honestly, when when you're working and you're in it and you're trying to, to make something good and good enough isn't good enough, um, you don't, I didn't get caught up in the success part of it at all. That was something going on out there. We were just trying to make a show. Um, You know, I remember walking through the airport. We premiered in September and in December, I was walking through the airport and the cast was on like every magazine cover. And I was like, whoa, whoa, something going on out there. Um, But, you know, again, it's not what we experienced. But you had to know that you were part of something special. You know, I'll tell you something. I knew I was part of something special at our first rehearsal. When the entire cast was on stage for the first time, I got chills up and down my spine. Mm. And I thought this is, I I didn't know it would be a success, but I knew it would be special. Um, And then at the end of the first season, people would stop me on the street and ask, you know, if I was wearing a friend's cap, Mm -hmm. um, what's going to happen with Ross and Rachel? (laughs) It was already a thing. And it was out there and it was in the zeitgeist and that's when zeitgeist. And that's when I started to sort of go, Oh, wait a minute. People are watching and we're doing really well in the ratings. And that was awfully shocking. Not just watching, but invested. Yeah. 
I'd like to have a follow up question if y'all don't mind. Mm. It's your show. It's your show. (laughs) show. That's just my show. I just let you hang out with me. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Weird as the narcissist say that. Uh, Oh shoot! Don't tell me I forgot. Oh, okay. Well, no, I I got it. I have it. Oh, how? First of all. Thank you for putting the word just zeitgeist in the middle of a sentence. Like everyone uses that in daily conversation. Just, right. like, yes. just a reminder <laughs> that I'm talking to a writer. <laughs> the vocabulary. But, but she said it. I was like, yeah, she writes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while you talk to a writer and go, yo, is there a thesaurus? Wait, let me just got it. it. But anyway, <laughs> back to my actual question. I've always wanted to, to know this. So this is kind of a personal question for mm, me because mm. I am the narcissist after all. But um, how does someone write that many episodes every week? You got an episode and another one for that long. I mean, don't like, because I know we write a novel and then it's like, whew, I need a moment. And it's then time, you switch it's over time to, to drink. Else. But how do you do it? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. We did 10 years, 236 episodes but not alone. We had a staff of writers, um, 12 writers, and we all did it together, you know, and we sort of, when one person was out of ideas, somebody else would have them. Um, And as far as I'm concerned, the only way we could have done it was with the the collaboration um, among the writers. So that means every person in that room had at least 24 good ideas? Yeah, that's nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> but twelve times twelve. Like, uh, what? What? One hundred and forty. Math is hard. Right. Okay. It, well, it well, wasn't even a good idea. Well, no, no, math. Except it wasn't always about an individual's idea. It was about the snowball effect of you know, here's an idea that may not be quite right, but what if you do this, and then someone goes, wait a minute, if you do that, then you can do this. And it snowballs. I always thought that would work. Were there any ideas that kind of wrote themselves, like something just kind of happened and it sparked a series of events that was pretty much writing itself? Um, I, there, I have two answers to that. One of them is the pilot wrote itself. Really? We wrote it in four days. It just, it was ready to be written. You know, it was out there. We just had to find it. Um, and the other thing that was very surprising to us, but took us in this whole direction, which kind of wrote itself was Monica and Chandler when they were in bed together. Mm -hmm. And we originally thought this was just going to be a really funny joke and it would be really awkward between them. But the audience went so crazy for that. In when we were shooting it that day, we just had to let them keep going. We couldn't even call cut. Um, and um, because it was so, it was received so well, we thought we got to pay attention. And then we took Monica and Chandler in a whole new direction. Yeah, that that was something that created quotes just that whole relationship created quotes that I share with a family member that we just say they know we know but they don't know we know know. know? (laughs) just things like that moments where we are quoting this forever it's living eternally in other people's vocabulary and we'll say these things around you know maybe someone who's never even seen friends yet because they're too young right (laughs) Right. Jade had a question. Okay, yeah. So before we talked about dialogue, and I think it was very interesting some of the things that you were saying about dialogue. And I know most of our audience are writers. So let's talk about how you write dialogue and keep it crisp. Yes. You know, there are a couple of things that happen when you write dialogue. One of them is when I'm writing by myself, I act it out in my head. I act all the parts and it's almost like I'm doing a whole little improvisation in my head Um, when I write alone. When I'm writing in a room, very often, again, we're working off of each other. You think about, oh, here's a good line. And then someone goes, oh, this will make it funnier. Um, And then the most important thing, I think, is once the dialogue is written, 
to read it out loud. Dialogue was not to be read, meant, was not meant to be read solely with your eyes. Dialogue was meant to be spoken. So the only way you can know if it's working is for people to play, even writers, play all the different parts and you can feel when you're, when you're acting out the part, oh, wait a minute, how did that character get from here to there? I didn't feel that transition. So that becomes incredibly important. Okay, I just wanted you to know that when you said that to me, I, you like changed my life. <laughs> and so I was like, everybody needs to know that. So yeah, well, Nona has been, I'm like, okay, let's read these parts. Make sure they work yeah. <laughs> in this book, come on. <laughs> so I think that's a really good tip. And thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Hanya. It's time for the serious part. So, so Marta. I have a question about the business side of things. You mentioned the pilot. Will you walk us through how a show gets picked up for a season from concept to pilot to green light, and then tell us what happens? It's, I can certainly share the story of Friends, which isn't necessarily with streaming how it goes now. Mm -hmm. But with Friends, um, you start with a pitch, you pitch it to places and hope that they fight over it, which we were fortunate enough they did. Um, we landed at NBC. Uh, we wrote an outline, which they approved. We wrote a pilot, which they greenlit to make. At that point, we just had sold a pilot script, but they liked it enough that they decided to shoot the pilot. The next big thing is finding a director and casting. And casting is, well, as you can imagine, um, extremely important. You have one person who doesn't fit in in a show like ours and it's not an ensemble and it doesn't work. So the casting process, which was very lengthy and very complicated and we almost lost people and people were doing other things and it was just, you know, but it all, the, the stars were aligned and um, the magic was in the air and we got these six people ultimately. And then we shot the pilot um, in front of a live audience and they, NBC then had to make the decision were they going to pick us up? And were they going to put, when were they going to put the show on the air? Like on, on what night? Mm -hmm. um, and we still didn't have a title that we loved. And I remember very clearly on a Thursday morning getting a call that at the time, I think we were calling it Friends Like Us. Um, and they called and they said, we want to put you on Thursday nights, but we want you to change the title to Friends. And we said, you can change it to Kevorkian if it's <laughs> on Thursday nights. So the last time that you pitched a show, how, was, how did it differ? It was very different. When we did Grace and Frankie, you know, we started with a pitch and wrote an outline and wrote a pilot. But what happens there, when you do network TV, you do a pilot, everybody looks at the pilot, they test it in front of a, you know, an audience, they, they do all sorts of decision-making and then say, okay, we'll order, you know, 12 episodes or however many they ordered, I can't remember. And then while we were shooting those first episodes, they ordered the back nine. Okay. Um, with Grace and Frankie and with streaming services, Sometimes how it goes is we wrote the script, they loved the script, and we went straight to 13 episodes. There was no pilot. There was no learning curve. Um, we just had to, we were just shot out of a cannon, uh -huh. starting with episode one and not stopping until we finished episode 13. Um, so it's a very different experience. It's a very different, as I said before, learning curve. Um, you know, with the pilot, you have a chance to go over it and look at it and really take it apart. Um, when you're going from the first episode to the second episode without a break, you have to learn as you go. So you better learn pretty quickly. And you can't really adapt based on feedback because you're not receiving any, are you? <laughs> Correct. 
you know, the only feedback you can go on are the notes you get on scripts and, and the feedback we give ourselves. And I think we're mm -hmm. harder, harder on ourselves, or I know I'm harder on myself than other people are on me. Yeah, that, that's yeah. The, the writer's life. Yeah, right saying, isn't that the writer's right. life? <laughs> you know, we all, that bread choice, I don't know. You know, you'd be surprised. There, There is a, I've noticed more recently um, that there, and I don't really want to say it's generational because that's not really fair, um, but there are people within certain age groups that don't quite have the work ethic that I feel you need to do good television or good anything. Um, but you know, you can't just go what's wrong with what's there. You know, you have to be willing to take it apart and, and re-knit the whole sleeve. Right. Yeah, revisions, revisions, revisions. <laughs> That's where the writing is. It's Absolutely. all in the rewriting. Tanya, one more question? Yeah. Only one? <laughs> Only one! Okay, okay, go ahead, Tanya. I don't so I've noticed that it's, it's, it's common practice for a television series to use multiple directors throughout a season, and I'm wondering why is that, and what are the pros and cons of that approach? Well, um, one of the reasons you use multiple directors, and I'll talk about Grace and Frankie now, we shot single camera, so it's not in front of a live audience. Mm -hmm. And the directors need four days of prep before they start shooting where they can walk the sets and scout locations and plan their shots. Then they're shooting for seven days or six or seven days. And then they have editing after that. So they couldn't go, they wouldn't even be able to do prep on the next episode if they were just rolling through. Sometimes you'll alternate directors sometimes, but um, in, in multi-camera, you use the same director for, we used the same director for a number of episodes. We switched it up a little bit, but once we found someone that everybody loved in multi-camera, it's easy to use the same director because you know the whole schedule begins and ends, the whole shooting schedule begins and ends in one week. You do a table read on Mondays, put it on its feet on Tuesdays, do a run through, do another run through on Wednesday. On Thursday, you do what they call the camera blocking, which is choreographing all the cameras. And then on Friday, we would do a dress rehearsal and then the show. And then that episode's over. So that director could come back, but in single camera, it's much more difficult. The, that makes sense. The, What ends up happening is you try to keep using the people who get the show and who get you and how you work. Right. Um, and are, you know, happy collaborators. People you vibe with, people who understand your vision and also right. someone who has earned your trust because they've shown up, they've done the job and they are willing to put in that. And they're good at it. And they're good at right. it. Right. Um, but, you know, people fall out and you have to take chances on people and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Did you feel it was taking a chance when letting David Schwimmer start directing? Um, really, Tanya? That's, uh, <laughs> well, you know, because because he was an actor was and, yeah. and I think that was kind of how he got his start directing, isn't it? Um, he did some theater. Okay. He did direct some theater, so it wasn't terribly scary and he's very smart and he obviously had the same kind of vision in mind he'd been exactly. part of the project like he was exactly. invested exactly amazing see this is why we have tanya on right yeah, as a co-host because she has like real insider she'd be like let me tell you about this and the business of this and we're like oh that's <laughs> fabulous because we write pop poetry i'm glad she's here saving us saving us so i guess i have um, to ask like the question that we have to ask everyone that comes on that acts and or anything, craft services, is it fabulous? Pre-pandemic, craft services was the bomb. Yeah. Do you think it's gonna go back? I'm sorry, oh. I wasn't supposed to ask another question. I just was- <laughs> You know, I, it, look, it's really fun to have a giant table um, with all sorts of snacks 
um, that changes throughout the day. And they bring between breakfast and lunchtime, they bring like a serious snack between lunch and dinner. There's another serious snack. I mean, the snacks are awesome. We had a, a, the woman who did craft service on um, Inger on Friends used to cook her own stuff. It was incredible. Um, but since the pandemic, it's changed. I mean, there's still food available, but it's all behind a net. And you can't just go over the table and grab something. It's sort of isolated. And the people who work craft services have to hand you whatever it is that you're looking for. Everything has to be boxed. So there's no like big container that we're gonna scoop things out of. Everything is boxed and made for individuals. So the, nobody has to touch anything. Wow. It well, still sounds good. It still sounds <laughs> great. Like I'm still excited. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can fit like 85 boxes in my in my backpack. I think I can still <laughs> do it. I think I can still get it done. Just a minute. You breaking the you taking everything out the box, putting it in some Ziploc, oh, taking it in the backpack, and we're rolling. I was trying to be classy. Oh, don't right. tell oh, my, my secrets. I was trying I'm to really be classy. Sorry. <laughs> Please forget that we said that. We're yeah, all the audience in the internet, just forget we said that. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> Allow me to distract her with another question. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I think I have one. So okay. what is the advice that you would tell writers in general out here that are trying to, to have a career? Um, you know... The, the, the best thing I can say, I think, is write, 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 write. And have people read what you write and give you feedback. Because the only way you're going to learn is by finding, admitting, and fixing your mistakes. So, just write a lot. That's a lot. That's a great insight. You're right. I just love this. You were like, right. So a person who's made an entire world, you like be humble enough to accept advice. You need to change your world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I as we all, it. as we always say, and I thought the voice was bad, wouldn't have been such a success if our beta reader hadn't read it and said, you're going to need something in here. Yeah. And <laughs> then life lessons were born. So not nearly as successful I mean, as you. Oh obviously not for <laughs> level. Obviously. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no one would ever claim that. <laughs> obviously, we like both. Obviously, but still. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us. I mean, yeah, it went by super fast. Well, almost it. like a half an hour, y'all. I know. I'm really know. sorry about that. Right. So I guess I go ahead right. and uh wrap us up. Wait. Is there any place that you would like to people to follow you on social media to, to find any of the shows that you mm -hmm. were watching? Do you want to promote anything pretty much is what we're asking. And do you have any charities that you wish us to help you support? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great question. I, I don't have, I'm not a big on social media. Um, so, I mean, I just do Facebook so I can catch up with old friends. In terms of charities, um, I, I have a lot. But right now we're focusing on the climate. So Greenpeace, which uses nonviolent ways to make change is a big one. Um, and there are also other organizations that um, really need our help right now, especially organizations that are fighting the laws in Texas regarding abortion um, and what's happening in Ohio. So I would say any of the organizations that are fighting that are really important. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that question. I appreciate it. See, this is why we have Tanya. She saves our life on a regular basis. Tanya, what can we? I'm find sorry. Don't you have an entire section devoted on your website to charities you support? <laughs> yeah, we do. Tanya, people don't find that out till the end. This, you, you take up my stick at the end, Tanya. Saving the world is a mission we share. Yes, yes absolutely. So Tanya, where can people find out more about you? You can find me across social media at Ms. Tanya Todd. I'm on IMDb under Tanya Todd. My website is www.mstanyatodd.com. 
And you can find my podcast on YouTube and Spotify. That's the 52 Love Podcast. Fabulous. Thank everyone for coming on today. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate the questions. <laughs> Yay! You, you've been an absolute inspiration. I just can't oh. even tell you how much I've enjoyed your work. Even some of the shows we didn't get to discuss today. I'm a big fan of Jesse. Oh, wow. <sighs> okay. I know, right? Y'all, I have to wrap it up. Y'all, come on. You okay. okay. leave me professionally. <laughs> one time to shine professionally. You can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.idithoughtladies.com. While you're there, go to the middle of the page to see the charities that we probably support. Maybe you can support them also. We thank you in advance for that. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona and Jade. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, thanks for listening.